40% of people who have had COVID-19 will go on to develop something called post-viral or long COVID. There is emerging evidence that people who have had COVID-19 vaccinations and suffer from long COVID may be finding that their symptoms are changing post-vaccination. In this video, we will discuss why this is and what the recommendation should be for people who have had COVID-19 regarding vaccinations. I'd like to take a moment to thank Heart Pharmacy for sponsoring this video. Thanks to Heart Pharmacy, I'm able to continue making these videos. And if you would like more information on relevant health topics, vaccinations, and care programs, you can sign up for their newsletter at www.heartpharmacy.com newsletter. Today's video will discuss long COVID. Data indicate that 50 to 80% of patients continue to experience symptoms three months or longer after the onset of COVID-19, even after tests no longer detect the virus in their body. This is a post-viral syndrome and it presents differently in each individual. Some of the most common symptoms are brain fog, exhaustion, chest pain, joint pain, difficulty doing simple tasks like even walking up the stairs, difficulty reading, migraines, and the list goes on and on. This post-viral syndrome seems to be affecting younger women more often than men, though men are still affected. Post-viral illness is not something new. Post-viral illnesses have been observed and documented since the early 1800s. This is something that any virus can cause. We see post-viral illnesses from viral diseases caused by influenza, H1N1, West Nile virus, even Ebola. Amy Pearl is a microbiologist and she has said that if COVID-19 did not present with any kind of post-viral syndrome, it would be the first virus that didn't. We know that COVID-19 can affect every system in the body. The symptoms that long-haul COVID individuals experienced are not unique. This is something that has been observed in patients with chronic fatigue otherwise known as myalgic encephalomyelitis. Chronic fatigue or myalgic encephalomyelitis affects up to 2.5 million Americans every year and thousands if not millions of Canadians as well. This is a disease that is often misunderstood and underdiagnosed. These patients are often bedridden, they cannot work, they cannot perform their day-to-day -day functions, they miss out on experiences with family because of the symptoms that they are experiencing. Often these symptoms have been misinterpreted as maybe a psychological syndrome, but there is now evidence that this is clearly a biological process that we are learning much about. A recent study with over 3,700 participants showed that these individuals reported a range of symptoms these symptoms involved over 10 systems in the body and 90% of people experiencing long COVID who participated in this study were not ever hospitalized and many of them reported very mild COVID-19 illness. The majority of these individuals were women. So why do people develop long COVID? There's a few different explanations. One of them is that there may be a viral reservoir in the body. Long after the virus is detectable in the blood, the virus may be housed in tissues, such as in the gut, or even in more severe cases, in the brain. And the body has difficulty clearing this virus out completely. While this virus is there in these different tissues, it causes inflammatory processes that cause the symptoms that these people are experiencing. Another theory is that the viral illness provokes an autoimmune response that causes the body to have difficulty differentiating between self and non-self. And it starts to generate very reactive cells that start attacking the body's own tissue. And this then generates the symptoms that these individuals are experiencing. We have evidence emerging that in patients with long COVID who have had vaccination, one third of them have reported that their symptoms actually improved post-vaccination. On the other hand, 
one-fifth of them reported that their symptoms worsened, and about half of them reported no change. So how could this be explained? Well, scientists say that it is surprising that people are experiencing an improvement after vaccination. This was not something that was expected. But there are some theories as to why. One of which is that the robust effectiveness of these vaccines is causing the body or helping the body to eliminate this viral reservoir or viral remnant that is left in the body. The other theory is that the vaccine may be stimulating cytokines that are part of the innate immune system. And these are helping these very reactive cells to be essentially dampened so their activity becomes less invasive. This is all developing very rapidly, but it is very interesting and it does help to explain why some people are seeing an improvement. Essentially, the vaccine may be helping the immune system to clear out what is left of the virus, even if it's undetectable in the blood, and also to help reduce these very reactive immune cells, dampen their activity, and cause them not to keep attacking their own cells. So what about one-fifth of people who are reporting that their symptoms actually do get worse? We still don't have an exact explanation for this, but it is known that because COVID-19 affects so many systems in the body, there are likely to be many factors at play, some of which the vaccine will not help with. How it would hinder, nobody seems to have an explanation as of yet. So should people who have already had COVID-19 and are experiencing symptoms of long COVID still receive a vaccination? The answer is yes. There is no evidence that vaccination would cause any kind of detrimental effect to people with long COVID. To the contrary, the body has already been stimulated and has evoked an immune response. It is likely that the vaccines will help to boost this immune response. The story of long COVID continues. Millions of people around the world every day are suffering from some type of post-viral illness. And for decades, these people have had difficulty getting the medical care and attention and access to treatment that they need to be able to live normal, healthy lives. My hope here is that the incidence of COVID-19 long haulers will cause an awareness of these post-viral illnesses, we will become more cognizant of the fact that post-viral illnesses affect millions of people every day. We will start to fund more research into this and we will start to acknowledge and accurately diagnose people with these syndromes and hopefully soon develop treatments that are able to help them. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time. If you're finding value in these videos, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon because that will notify you of future videos. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care and stay healthy. Bye-bye.